Well, it's another year, another birthday, and it felt right to update this second chapter of my life. This episode, as to be expected, will build upon what we've already gone through in Chapter 2, Making the Most of 30 and Beyond, and Chapter 2.2, Going All In. So for this third video, I won't rehash, and we'll pick up where we left off. This year, I fulfilled a personal accomplishment that I dreamed about for years, but never thought I'd come to complete so soon. I visited North Dakota. Population 755,393. The 19th largest state, but the fourth least populated. Known for expansive, unobstructed fields, it leaves a lot of space for the mind. A lot of room for solace, contemplation, and Midwestern charm. I've wanted to visit North Dakota for a couple years now, but not for these reasons, but rather because to signify the conclusion of that personal goal I alluded to earlier. My work has taken me all over the country, from north to south, east to west, from mountains to plains, and from sea to shining sea. But when I drove into North Dakota, I set foot on my 50th state. As of April 2018, I have visited every state in the United States, plus the District of Columbia, on the coattails of my music. It was rewarding and it was fulfilling. This reality brought a richness to those vast open fields and a peace that I no longer had to worry about doing something stupid like dying in some freak accident with just one state left. No joke, I was literally concerned about that for some reason, don't ask. But at the same time, it was a little bittersweet because I realized that I had broken the map. Each of the past few years has transformed new cities and states from textbook concepts to permanent pieces of my personal history. With North Dakota finished, there are no more states to aim for. But that's okay, there's a flip side to every coin. So while we're here, I thought I'd share with you some of my favorite superlatives now that I've officially broken the map. The first and favorite state I've been to would be my home state of California. I enjoy the weather, the scenery, the variety, and the accessibility. Plus, it's home, and I love it. If I had to choose another state to live in, I'd choose Colorado or Arizona. Colorado is beautiful and big enough to have most of what you'd want, but not so much so to be plagued with congestion and excessive tourism. And Arizona? Well, it doesn't get cold. At least not where I'd choose. Florida would be a distant runner-up, mainly because of the humidity and the obese flying roaches. But if they can pass a law to get rid of those two things, count me in. The coldest I've been was in Fairbanks, Alaska at minus 15 degrees. I know that's not the coldest of the cold, but hey, just call me lucky. The hottest would have been Parker, Arizona at 116 degrees. Well, that was until SoCal had a heat wave last month and matched it, so I guess we have a tie now. The worst storms I've been in were in eastern Wyoming and the upper peninsula of Michigan while I was making cross-state road trips. I don't have pictures for obvious reasons, but just imagine driving at night on a snowy and icy freeway while horizontal curtains of snow blast across your windshield and trucks pulling trailers zigzag wildly through the wind across the highway in front of you while big rigs charge up the fast lane like they're in the Daytona 500 and completely mask you in opaque clouds of snow that take three to five seconds to dissipate while you're still trying to drive. So if you're wondering why I picked Arizona as one of my alternate states to live in. There you go. Speaking of, my favorite natural wonders would be the Grand Canyon, which was not overrated as I was fearing, and the Sheridan Glacier in Cordova, Alaska. Special runner-up prizes to Niagara Falls in New York, Crater Lake in Oregon, and Lassen National Park in Northern California. Favorite skylines would be Manhattan, Dallas, and Cincinnati. Best road trips would be Utah Highway 6 and 191 from Salt Lake City to Moab, a profound mountainous adventure, California PCH1 up the pristine California coastline, Alaska Highway 4 from Anchorage to Valdez, a bleak winter wonderland, and Mississippi Highway 49 from Jackson to Purvis, a box of surprises. It was sunny and warm, overcast and rainy, sunny with a lightning storm, cloudy and thunderous, and sunny and warm again, all within a 45-minute drive through lush southern greenery. It was captivating. Favorite cities would be Washington, D.C. or New York City. Most underrated state would be South Dakota for pure natural beauty. Give that place a shot if you ever get a chance. Best food. There's several contenders here, but we'll start with... Portland, Oregon, Nashville, Tennessee, Portland, Maine, New Orleans, Louisiana, Los Angeles, California, San Francisco, California, San Antonio, Texas, and Phoenix, Arizona. But I won't mention the biggest overrated disappointment just because I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. I am. The most awkward moment on the road would definitely have to be in Great Falls, Montana. I was going to share that story here, but I think for time's sake, I'll push it back to a future video. But it was definitely one of the most awkward experiences, if not the single most awkward experience I can ever remember having. 
But ironically, for my friendly estates, Montana also makes the list alongside Northern Idaho. For some reason, Idaho is like two different states once you go south of the Panhandle. Southern Idahoans are nice too, but more in an average way. But the people of Western Montana and Northern Idaho stand out as the two warmest, most welcoming people in the country, in my opinion. With a tri-state area linking Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana as a very close second. So I mentioned earlier that there is an anticlimactic undertone to visiting my final state. But thankfully, this year came equipped with a new solution. In 2018, Daryl Johnson II has gone international. I visited my first international schools in British Columbia, Alberta, and Manitoba, Canada, and it was awesome. Loved those schools, every single one. The only thing I wish I could have done that would have made this year even more awesome is if I could have brought my music to someplace far and way out there, like Australia or something. Oh, hey, never mind. <laughs> Bam. It's my birthday. Well, actually, yes, it was my birthday last week in Sydney. Somebody stop the madness. Stop it right now. Australia. I'm actually here right now, and there's no place I'd rather be. But really, guys, it's been exciting. It's, it's been curious. It's been novel. And it's also been unstable. In the first video of this series, I spoke about the decision we can make in life when we look across the horizon and choose to stay or to go, to turn back or to jump and hope to God that you fly. I know how it felt to stand still and wish. I imagined what it would be like to land on the other side. But what no one can truly be prepared for is the feeling of being stranded midair with predictability and stability behind you and a dream in front of you, but every dark fear below you. Some pretty cool things have fallen into place for me, but there's still a long way to the other side. I'm not gonna lie, I am anxious every year uncertain all the time, and there's still a lot to be done. But I'm endlessly thankful for faith and family. The factory simply has not produced a better set of parents. The fact of the matter is, there is no other way to the other side, or through the force we discussed in chapter 2.2, than through this passage. Fascinating, it is. Humbling, it is. Enlivening, it is. But easy, it is not. And I am holding my breath. Until next time, Thanks for watching.